How to Pay for the Green New Deal by Yevon Narcissian and L. Randall Ray Caveats We certainly acknowledge that some of the resources released by the fossil fuel and healthcare sectors may not be appropriate for Green New Deal projects. Although a good case can be made that a lot of the workers would be able to contribute to either working in Green New Deal projects or helping with administration. On the other hand, we have not discussed imports as a source of resources to meet higher demand. We should not rely excessively on imports of production that is needed for greening projects, solar panels, wind power equipment, and electronic transportation, etc., at least to the extent that other countries are mobilizing to use their resources to fight climate change themselves. However, as employment rises to boost general consumption, at least some of that will be met by imported consumer goods. This is not necessarily something to be avoided, as many nations need to export consumer products to obtain earnings they need to import green technology. This will help to attenuate inflation pressure, as it has done over the past two decades, and helps to explain why the FAIR model's simulation of the job guarantee program that boosted employment by 19 million, raised wages to or above $15 per hour, and increased annual GDP by half a trillion dollars, projected almost no inflation pressure. There are also other increases in aggregate demand that we have not estimated, such as the remaining windfall to employers and employees from health care premiums they are no longer going to pay. While many of the miscellaneous Green New Deal projects, additional public infrastructure, free public colleges, job training, child care, will require resources, we have argued that by increasing productivity, they will also supply resources. So as we have assumed, their resource use nets to zero. While this should be true over the long run, there could be a net demand for resources in the early years. Whether this is inflationary depends on whether they are phased in as resources are made available. That, in turn, requires careful planning. Our main goal has been to set out a framework for analyzing the cost of the Green New Deal, not to promote any particular estimate of the cost. We hope to change the debate from $93 trillion to careful assessment of resource needs and availability. We need an informed discussion of the best method of reducing resource use, should that become necessary, so as to free up resources for the Green New Deal. We have discussed deferred compensation as a preferred method. However, we believe that if the requirements turn out to be much larger than what we have estimated, we can also explore the other methods that were successfully used in World War II. Patriotic saving, which is voluntary deferred consumption, price controls, rationing, and additional taxes. Most importantly, if taxes are to be used, they must be formulated to reduce resource use, not to raise revenue.